Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel here, the Tactical Intellectual Channel. Now, if you've been looking at these, uh, I guess, presentations that I have been doing, you know that a lot of it, the bulk of it, 95% of it, centered around the British Islands. But um, really, I have to make a pivot because uh, while I am going to still touch on the British Isles, I do have to establish the uh, continental Europe first because uh, I'm coming up timeline wise. I am coming up on a uh, time period where a lot of migrations, you know, will come and take place rapidly. So I have to establish the continental European landmass first, you know, before I proceed with the uh, you know, Ireland, Scotland. Wales and the overall um, British Isles, you know, and um, I'm definitely going to have a lot of good sources on here, and this will be a multi part presentation. Now, in videos that I have already done and um, I guess published on YouTube, there has been many sources that I've used that kind of touched on, you know, continental Europe. Um, it, you know, I think, uh, what is it? The place of the Welsh and, um, what is it? The riddles of prehistoric times. Now that did touch on continental Europe right there, but that wasn't like the haymaker. That was kind of like a jab, jab. So I definitely want to reintroduce these, uh, sources kind of like a reminder, you know, reiterate some things before I really pull the curtain back you know on my presentation so uh yeah just gonna go ahead and get started here so instead of beating the dead horse i want to peel the onion quote unquote and like peeling the onion the deeper you get the more enzymes are released and those enzymes cause irritation you know so i want to cause um, how would you put it academic and intellectual irritation to the progressive era type of information here so I'm going to read establish and move on annals of the Caledonians picks Scott's both volumes 1 and 2 um, riddles of prehistoric times the history of Ireland the place of the welsh and then finally we're going to slow down a little bit when it comes to origin of the anglo-saxon race so let's lay these proverbial bricks here so now we're gonna just look over on um joseph ritson's book entitled annals of the caledonians picks and scots and of strathclyde cumberland galloway and murray Looking at page nine right there, we're gonna focus on the bottom portion right here, where it says, after Germanic, it says, the swarthy countenance going into page 10 of the Salures, who inhabited what is now called South Wales. Okay, now it's gonna give a detailed description. Okay, curled hair. Okay, for the most part, okay, the position. Okay, look, this is where the gold is right here and their position against Spain and do say belief. He thinks that they were ancient Iberians who had passed over and occupied these seats. They who are next to the Gauls are likewise similar to them, either by the force of original influence remaining or by those countries running opposite. Okay. And then you drop down, he, he says, um, it is credible that the Gauls have occupied the neighboring soil. Now he's talking about all those um, Salur, Salurish people. Okay. All right, I think that's pretty much it for volume one. Now we're going to go into um, Annals of the Caledonians picks, you know, in Scott's volume two, page seven. And, um, okay, we're going to read 
okay the small print right here more of the foot note and um okay where is it okay it says uh okay mr pinkerton who says that in person the lowlanders are tall and large with their complexions and often with waxing yellow red hair blue eyes okay okay that's not the point but we're going to look at the highlanders right there the highlanders are generally diminutive with brown complexions and almost always with black curled hair and dark eyes okay so it says these highlanders or irish scots okay so there's there's a connection right there i mean you see the first part i read is making a distinction but you know when it talks about the highlanders it's making a connection with the um people in volume one who are these salures and they um i guess link them to the iberians and the gauls okay so that's that part you know that was not good enough that was not good enough those people that adhere to the progressive era education you know they got nothing from that they're cool calm and collected i put no pressure on them so you know what to cause that irritation so to speak i need to use more hard-hitting sources so you know what i'm gonna go to riddles of prehistoric times written by james h anderson and you know i have to read the um page what is it what, what do i want to read page 37 chapter 3 entitled primitive man but you know what we're going to read a little bit you know because uh rome wasn't built in a day so I'm not going to get the whole point in just one sentence like that. So, page 37, it reads, The first men were probably small in stature, dark-skinned, with dark hair and eyes. And that's about it. I'm going to move on to uh, page 55 of the same book. And we're going to add more pressure to it. Like that onion more enzymes the more skin you peel off the more enzymes gonna affect you and uh, cause irritation great irritation so page 55 of pre of uh riddles of prehistoric times it reads the first inhabitants in italy were of the race which has been called yapigian a small dark people like bushmen they were gradually driven before the people who invaded the land from the north until they were concentrated in the southeastern part of the country in what is known as the hill of italy okay so we're going to go on to 57 here okay the the iberians in ancient times inhabited the western and southern part of europe the northern part of africa in fact, all parts reached from the Mediterranean Sea, the Basque in Spain and France, the Little Dark Welshmen, the Scotch and Black Celts to the west of the Shannon River, as well as the same kind of land in Brittany, the Equitine in France, the Guanches of the Canary Islands and the Berbers of, in Africa are all probably the remnants of the race. I'm going to drop down page 57. The Basques are of middle size, compactly built, robust, and agile, of a darker complexion, going to 58, than the Spaniards. Okay, now, okay, drop down a little bit. The first inhabitants of Southern Europe, Northern Africa, Arabia, France, and the British Isles were a race of small men did not average in height more than four feet five inches they were of a slight build with dark complexion okay that's all we need right there okay drop down it says that they were an african people okay now we'll drop down some more it is said that the first people in ireland were the formatians 
they were a dark stunted race okay let's move on a little bit uh, and then it, it says that it is said they came from Africa on ships okay all right making some progress now let us look into another source this one is the history of Ireland by Thomas Moore and we're gonna look at page 71 and the backdrop is Ireland of course but then look at who's uh, the participants involved of this uh, fierce war that is being waged right here it's the Fomorians and then it says that the Fomorians a tribe of African sea rovers which are pirates and they said that what who then invested the coast of Ireland and you know, so okay it mentions that the stronghold of these African mariners okay who are supposed by probably to have been Carthaginian traders and then the stronghold was the tower of Conan or Conan okay which was on the island of Ulster okay and then there's an Irish poem called the storming of the tower of Conan or Conan and it's still okay it's still here with us today all right so let me go ahead and go over to page 72 so page 72 okay up top okay we have the highlighted portion right here okay so there's talk it's talking about another connection the two of the denons you know greece then Denmark and Norway, then finally Ireland. You know, I'm gonna come back to this. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but you know, um, in future videos, I definitely will be speaking on these people right here. Moving on to page 91, we see that okay, the Picts were the original inhabitants of North Britain. And the same people with the Caledonians, okay. And that's pretty much it right there. We're gonna use this source later on in other videos. So um, let's move forward. All right, so on page 93, the only reason I am reading this is because um, this is somewhat foreshadowing because uh, I will use this later on when I jump back to my UK series um, I guess another Irish presentation part three probably but it's definitely relevant here so I'm gonna read the um, first full paragraph um, of the highlighted portion on page 93 and it says uh, you know taking these and some other circumstances that shall presently be mentioned into consideration it is hardly possible i think to resist the conclusion that the people called picks were the progenitors of the present welsh being themselves a branch of the cambric stock from whence all the traditions of the latter people represent them to have been derived and that instead of the welsh having become the picks as was supposed by Camden and others, the result of the evidence shows, on the contrary, that the Picts became the Welsh. So, what else do we have? Okay, that's kind of pertinent right there because I, I, I will kind of address it in this very video here later on you know, regarding the Welsh, but then I will have more clarity in um, future videos so now I was, what, what page was this 93 so okay so this book we're gonna go right into page 94 okay so 94 all right 
Okay, so it says like under the German name of Bali or Welsh, bestowed upon them by the invaders, may be traced as acting a distinguished part in the affairs of, of Britain for many centuries after. Okay, so it's basically saying that they um this uh Kimbrick um group which became the Picts or was known as the Picts. Uh when other people came in, they bestowed the name Welsh to them. So then it stuck afterwards. Okay. I'm going down, okay. I'm only going to read this for the name. Okay, it may be added as another strong confirmation of the identity between the Stratclyde Welsh and the Picts that from the time of the total defeat of the latter by Kenneth MacAlpin, King of the Scots, no further mention occurs of the kingdom of Strathclyde. Okay, take the name Kenneth MacAl MacAlpin, the first name Kenneth. Okay, remember Kiar? <laughs> it's definitely a derivative of that name right there. I'm going to break this figure down um, a little bit later. I'm going to do a little compare contrast, show and prove and set the record straight. Okay, so I think that's about it here now. Okay, we have one more book before we get into, well, one more source to skim over. And, you know, before we get into uh, the main event, <laughs> so to speak. So now we're going to move on to another source. The book is entitled The Place of the Welsh in the History of Britain by Boyd Dawkins. And we're going to look at page seven to start off with. And we're just going to skim over some important facts. So... I guess the portion or the part that we're reading is where the subheading is uh, the small dark Welsh again but then let's look at it right here okay on page 8 we see that two people Caesar and Tacitus uh, during the time of the Roman conquest there was at least two different type of people in Britain right there. You had um, a tall, fair-haired, blue-eyed Celt. Okay. And then you had the dark complexion, wavy-haired South Welshmen. Right? Those, those Welshmen, again, are Salours, Picts, Caledonians. Okay. So, Tacitus, he compared the um i guess these dark welshmen to the iberi of spain right there so there's a connection a link right there and then again you know in this, in this uh i guess yellow highlighted part right here they say um in denby and saint asaph okay where the small dark welshmen they seem to be identical with everything but dress and speech with the small dark Basque of the Western Pyrenees, both French and Spanish. Now, in another book, another source, which was, um, I want to say, Riddles of Prehistoric Times, they um, mentioned that I guess the um, the small dark or the dark Basque was kind of between small and medium sized. You know, okay, so then it says, uh, okay, in the orange highlight right there, that, okay, you don't have to go as far as the Pyrenees to find people identical with the small dark Welsh, okay, the small dark Irish, man, the small dark Highlander, and the dark inhabitants of Devon and Cornwall. Are physically of the same race right there okay and then of course we can look at um that name but right there because he's a you know a guy who researched all of these and you know, i have some of his stuff too so we're gonna look at you know some of his content or or research um 
in future videos. Okay, now here, here's the main point right here. Okay, so they're talking about Dr. Polka right there. And then this is the the golden nugget, quote, end quote, unquote, rather. There is no longer any room for doubt that the small dark Welshman is a fragment of people formerly widely extended over Europe, but now broken up into ethnological islands by subsequent invasions right here. Okay, so that's page nine. So, okay. And there's another point where, what, what other points do I wanna make? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna look at page 16. I gotta put this out there. Okay, now the timeline of, you know, all of this stuff here is, uh, you got, you got the Stone Age period, and then you have the uh, Bronze Age. You know, in the Irish video, I guess, uh, it was touching on the Stone Age, but then when those farmers came over, that was the Bronze Age right there. Okay, but let's go before that. Now, okay, on page 16 it says that, okay, page 16 says that the small dark element in the Welsh people has been proved to be a fragment of the Iberian race that occupied the whole of Britain, France, and Spain in the remote age of polished stone. Okay, but then let's drop down. It was a race not only pre Aryan but non Aryan. Okay, and it belongs to an ill defined section of mankind found in early times in Sicily and represented now by the Berbers and Abiles, Cabiles and the Aborigines of the Canary Islands. Okay. Yeah, that's about it right there. That is about it. So by going over these four sources here, what is it that I am establishing exactly? Well, I'm establishing that Italy, they had a race of people, the Iapigian people. Um, when you look at their description, they are described as small, dark, complected people, very similar to the Bushmen that you will find on the continent of Africa. They also, there also was dark skinned Iberian people in ancient times. And those people inhabited the Western and Southern parts of Europe. You know, the proof of the pudding is that um, the Welsh people were described as small and dark, along with the Irish, the Scottish, and the Brits, and also France. These were the same people right there. The Basques were anywhere between small sized and middle sized. But one thing that they all shared was they had darker complexions, you know? And then the Basque was um, described as having darker complexions than the Spaniards, who already had dark complexions. So as was said, on page nine of the book, The Place of the Welsh in the History of Britain, there is no longer any room for doubt. The small dark Welshman is a fragment of a people formerly widely extended over Europe, but they're now broken up into ethnological islands by subsequent invasions. We will go over those invasions later on. And um, okay, so this is the main point to establish right here. Southern Europe was originally full of melanated or African type people from the continent of Africa and the Near East region. And there's other areas too, but I wanna establish this first right here, you know? So let's, let's keep moving. So now we're gonna get into our next source here, but um, I just have to let you guys know my method of uh, dispensing information will kind of revert back to how I used to do it in the other videos instead of that peel the onion method that's all part of this video but I'm going to go back to read elaborate 
and move on. So let me just speak a little bit. You know, I have a I have several books that I felt were really revelatory, and they they are, but to this magnitude, nah. Ancient and Modern Britons Volumes One and Two, they're up there, but this one right here. You know, this is this is like the pinnacle. It's like top five in my house right here. The name of the book is Origin of the Anglo-Saxon Race, a study of the settlement of England and the tribal origin of the old English people. And it's written by Thomas William Shore and Louis or Lewis Earl Shore. And a little background about this uh, book right here. I'm going to show you the in cover or inside cover right there and um, I'm gonna show you the uh, I guess the credibility of this book like it's kind of faded right there but you can see of course is it says edited by his sons TW Shore and LE Shore but this was underneath that lend some credibility if it didn't already have any See, it says uh, Clare College Library, Cambridge, right there. So, for those who don't know, Clare College is a college in Cambridge, England, right there. It's located in the University of Cambridge. And I say it has a pretty good reputation worldwide to the consensus that people like Cambridge or the University of Cambridge. So, it was in that library definitely back in the day. And I'm going to leave the archive.org link, but I do definitely suggest that you guys get the hard copy because we know that websites shut down every day. So I definitely don't want it to happen, but you know, these are the times that we live in here. So uh, yeah, check out Amazon for this uh, title here. And you know, get it while it's cheap because I know a lot of titles you know, that have that real information. Things end up they they go from like twenty dollars or thirty dollars to like uh, five hundred to eight hundred, even thousands of dollars because people that that want to, I guess, continue on with that narrative, the trash narrative, and they don't want you to be educated. They they buy up all the books and then you know drive the price up and just get ridiculous man selling like $30 books for obscenely exorbitant prices right there so snatch these things up before the opportunity is lost forever don't want that to happen all right silly me I forgot to mention that um, this book is also in the libraries of many colleges and universities I know for a fact in the US United States um, Canada too or probably worldwide no doubt page 66 chapter 5 is talking about the Phrygians their tribes and their allies we're definitely gonna go over this full chapter later on but let's go to page 75 here this is and appetizer in the province of Drenthe in Holland where the river hunts has its source there still exists a remnant of a more ancient population than the old Phrygian these people are of different physical characters from their neighbors they are broad-headed while the true Phrygians are long-headed they are brown in aspect while the Phrygians are fair and they are supposed to be descendants of a remnant of the very ancient brown race of Europe who were left when their country was overrun at a remote period by the people of the Gothic or Germanic stock. We have no knowledge of the physical characters of the Hunzings or Huni mentioned by Bede, but as these brown people of Holland who are to be found in Drenthe and Overridge Zell occupy the, 
the country which was in part occupied by the Hunzings, there may have been some connection between them. Now, what are the key takeaways on page 75 right here, the highlighted portion that I just read? Well, this is in Holland right here. So it says that that these people, well, we're talking about the brown people right here. These people are of a different physical, I guess, character from their neighbors, right? Here. So we know that they had different peoples settled side by side. You know, there was definitely mingling there, but for the most part, you had one group here, one group there, different types. And it said that, um, okay, they are brown in aspect right there, while the Frisians are fair or paler, you know, because I mean, fair means beautiful back in the day. I don't know how they just remixed it into something else. <laughs> but anyway, this is the, um, I guess, the, the point here. They are supposed to be descendants of a remnant of the of the very ancient brown race of Europe who were left when the country was overrun at a remote period by other people. So that's that's a migration coming in right there. And then it says, uh, okay, they don't have any knowledge of these brown people. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. Well, you see, setting the table right now. Okay, so let's proceed. Now, we are on page 103, and the chapter is chapter 7 right here. The name of the chapter is Our Darker Forefathers. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, we're not going to read this page right here. I have plans for this page, but instead, we're going to go to page 106 right there of chapter 7. And... Well, uh, there's a lot right here. We have the underlying portion and the highlighted portion right there. But the main, well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and go over all of this right here. Now, the underlined portion reads, There is, in addition, evidence that points to Norwegians of a brunette appearance as another source whence brown complexion people may have come into England <sighs> I didn't want to read that yet man <laughs> alright I'm establishing Europe first okay man I wish I can anyway man I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in here okay the highlighted portion on the southeast coast of Norway and here and there on the coast farther north a population is met with which differs from the usual Norwegian type and this has been referred by anthropologists to a very ancient settlement there of the prehistoric brown race that survives in the highlands of Central Europe and is known as the Brown Alpine Race. That's what I wanted to read. <laughs> but, um, what else do we have? Let's go on to page 110 right here and let's get more confirmation okay the highlighted portion uh, the survival of some people with broad heads and of a brown type in parts of Drenthe Kulderland and Overjitsu <laughs> appears unmistakable they present a remarkable contrast in appearance to their Frisian neighbors who are of a different complexion in regard to hair and skin and are especially characterized as long-headed. Okay, that's 110 right here. Okay, so then let's go on to... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, we're not going to move just yet. Okay, look at this. The evidence concerning the origin of the broad-headed Slavonic nations connects them with the broad-headed and still older Alpine brown race of Central Europe. Okay, Central Europe. Okay, it says uh, <laughs> this old race 
has sometimes been called Celtic, but it is perhaps more accurate to say that it is the very ancient stock on which the old Celtic race of the British Bronze Age was an offshoot. Hmm. Okay, so what? Okay. All right, now we can go ahead and move to page 118 right here. And this is like the third kind of uh, stamp of approval for the point that I made to as to why I stand on my point. Okay. Now, this part right here on page 118 of chapter seven, our darker forefathers, it reads um, the highlighted portion. It says, from what has been said of the presence of broad headed people of a brunette type in parts of Norway, among the much more numerous long headed people of a fair complexion or you know lighter skinned who formed the bulk of the Norwegian nation, it will be seen that the facts point to an early broad headed brown race, some of whom settled on the Norwegian coast. The long headed, fair or pale race of the typical Norse variety having perhaps subsequently conquered them. In any case, we find evidence sufficient to justify the inference that probably the early broad-headed people were brown. The same result is obtained by the study of the broad-headed people of Central Europe, the present day. The descendants presumably of the old alpine brown race. The same evidence is afforded by the remnant of the winds whose skulls are broad and whose complexions are more or less brown at the present day, notwithstanding their fusion with the Germans. That's called foreshadowing. I'm going to get on the German subject later on in you know, videos down the line because I mean, it's that the evidence is heavy right here. But anyway, pages 106, 110, 118, the reason for reading and presenting these pages in this chapter is to show that Central Europe had what was called an ancient alpine brown race right there. So, um, you know, these, these were people that evidently was conquered in migrations, but, you know, the evidence is there. Okay. All right, so now let's jump back to page 109 and let's get the final nail in the coffin regarding these, um, I guess, different types of people here. So the highlighted portion reads, as regards the ancient brown race or races of North Europe, there can be no doubt of their existence in the southeast of Norway and in the east of Friesland or Friesland, <laughs> there can be no doubt about the important influence which the old Wendish race has had in the northeastern parts of Germany in transmitting to their descendants a more brunette complexion than prevails among the people of Hanover, Holstein, and Westphalia of more pure Teutonic descent. We cannot reasonably doubt that in view of such a survival of brown people as we find at the present time in the provinces of North Holland, Drenthe and Overridge <laughs> Cell. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry for butchering that. Which formed the hinterland of the ancient Frisian country. Numerous brunettes must have come into England among the Frisians. Oh, okay. Now I'm spilling too much. That's that. I'm not. I'm not trying to foreshadow that. That's content for future videos. <laughs> All right. Well, right now this is the table setter right here. Okay. So yeah, that's about it right there. Actually, that is not it right there. The point was that 
um, North Europe had an ancient brown race, you know, ancient because uh, they were there first, man, you know, just like in that Irish video, those people that, um, you know, uh, what do they call it, the Irish hunter gatherer population, they were, they were amongst themselves for like 4,000 years, man, for millennia before these uh farmers came from the russian steppe region and turkey so i mean europe was the same way I mean, let's be for real they say they're ancient because i mean <laughs> hey i guess you could say primitive or prime the first people there you know i'm being redundant right now but i mean that's the only way that i get through some people you know but hey Let's go ahead and finalize this video again we're just putting the tablecloth onto the table right here you know, before we start bringing out the dinnerware and putting food on the table but anyway the riddles of prehistoric times that book right there it establishes that western and southern europe had a presence of I guess brown people people with melanin and everything you know people who you would classify as black in today's um you know uh society right here and then the place of the welsh it establishes that britain spain france you know was a hub for dark-skinned peoples and it mentions that um it was also pre-aryan so that means it was non-aryan you know as we know it today well the word Aryan as we know it today and that um and that was in the age of polished stone right there so it also hinted at actually it outright stated that you know these dark people groups they were widely extended over all of Europe so then when you go to the origin of the Anglo-Saxon race it outright confirms it you know we go to central europe and northern europe central europe and northern europe so it mentions um i guess the ancient alpine brown race and the brunette types and everything all up in there so oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what's the last source um the history of ireland you know it speaks of you know that book right there the history of ireland it speaks of African pirates who infested the coast of coasts of Ireland. So that's just dessert right there. So let's see, we have Western Europe, Southern Europe, uh, Central Europe, and Northern Europe. So hey, like I say, man, the tablecloth is being placed over the table. You know. So this is it for um, this video right here. We're gonna have part two later on and I'm gonna start breaking it down. You know, um, yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be pretty good. So I feel pretty good about this one right here. So, you know, you guys uh, like, subscribe, you know, share it. Most importantly, take this in, teach your children or the people that's around you collect the source material because i mean they they can disappear you, know, you got people like ron DeSantis and other uh politicians out there trying to ban books and burn books and you know all kinds of garbage out here you know, lying youtubers on <laughs> you know who they are okay so let me go ahead and work on part two okay i'll see you guys next time